Welcome to the first episode of the Breeders' Cup Challenge Series show. If you want to feel like a Breeders' Cup boffin and get a jump on all your friends when it comes to the World Championships in November, then you've come to the right place. Strap yourselves in, this is going to be fun. My name is Rosie Tapner and I'm here at the Fairmont Windsor Park where a certain famous jockey who goes by the name of Frankie de Tory stayed during Royal Ascot. Now I'm going to be keeping you up to date and in the loop with all the comings and goings of the Breeders' Cup Challenge win and you're in. But I hear you say what are the Breeders' Cup Challenge win and you're in? Let me take you through that right now. Across the year, there are multiple races around the globe, 11 countries to be precise, which act as an opportunity for a free ticket to the Breeders' Cup World Championship at Keeneland in November. It starts in Argentina in mid-December and goes through South Africa, Japan, Chile, the USA, Brazil, Peru, France, Ireland, Canada, and all ends in the UK at Ascot in mid-October. It's 82 races in total. Each race earns entry to a specific race across the two-day 14 race card. Winners from outside of the US get a $40,000 travel allowance with their stamp ticket into a race. Yes, 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 yes. Well, we've cleared that up, haven't we? Let me recap it one more time. There are 82 races. You win any of those and you have a free entry to the Breeders' Cup World Championship at Keeneland. So we're better to start our show than at Royal Ascot, where we had four win and you're in races across the week. Let's go and catch up with me, myself and I in the parade ring. Well, it's the final day here at Royal Ascot 2022 and what a fantastic week we have had. I'm currently on the podium where we have seen so many winners come in. But more importantly, we've had the win and you're in Breeders' Cup Challenge Series races. And we've had four of them this week and we've had some outstanding performances. Also a few surprises along the way. But don't take my word for it. Let's show you. They're off. Here he comes now, Baid, cruising through with Jim Crowley, a scintillating winner, Baid is unbeaten. You ever go to the fun fair and you're waiting in the queue for a fast ride? That's the feeling before you get up and it's just a close. Great Australian sprinter, Nature Stripe and James McDonald, and look how far they've won by. Obviously he's a world-class horse, it's a great thrill. Now the way he did it was, was pretty special. State of Rest is fighting on tenaciously though, and he's going to fend them all off to make all for Joseph O'Brien and Shane Cross. State of Rest. Very special to have a winner here. I mean, this is what it's all about. The Riddler just getting on top, close to the finish, and the Riddler and Paul Hannigan go on to win the Norfolk. To actually do something like that today is unbelievable. I think he's ideal for American racing. Not too shabby, eh? Well, the Royal Meeting never disappoints. And I know I had a really special week there. It's all about the best of the best. But if you were to ask me to choose a standout performance, that's really hard. But if I had to, it would be State of Rest. What a superstar that horse is. He's already won in Ireland, in France, the US, and last year in Australia. So let's head to the Curragh and catch up with his jockey, Shane Cross, to hear what he had to say about the Royal Ascot winner. I think my whole career I haven't witnessed anything like it. Looking at it on paper, there was no key front runner. State of rest is fighting on tenaciously though, and he's gonna fend them all off. What a buzz to be riding in Ascot and, and, and to steer home a winner was, was to top it off. I was very confident in my horse's ability going into it. We had our plan made and, and tactics were talked through and uh, yeah, I, I knew what we were doing. Lord North moves in to complete the line. I was keen to get to the front here, so I needed a good break and uh, you know, he was brilliant. I've just laid up his neck let him stretch for a long just to make sure I get to the front. 
um, and, and he's done it very quickly and, and without using too much energy, which is brilliant. I have everyone strung out behind me, so they're comfortable where they are at this moment of the race. And uh, now I'm just keen on getting state of rest back underneath me, relaxed, and just trying to save as much energy as I can at this point of the race. Halfway, five furlongs, a thousand metres still to go. We're just about to come towards the four now and I, I, I've saved a lot of energy throughout the race and I'm just about to leave him, just go up a gear and I just don't want the field surrounding me for home and making me go before I need to. We've swung in now, there's about two and a half to race and I'm just going through the gears. Ryan is beginning to challenge but my guy is, he's a superstar. He's absolutely doing 100% and at this point in time, you know, he's gonna win the, the Prince of Wales and, and he has so, no, it was brilliant. He's well used to a big crowd and, and they were shouting him on and, you know, he was, he was just amazing. Once the madness, I suppose, calmed down afterwards and the interview stopped and I managed to get back in, um, first of all, you have the Ryan Moores and the Frankie the Tories and, you know, they're coming up shaking your hand and saying, well done, and it's a bit surreal. And um, I finally got to sit down and, and just pick up my phone even and you see the well done's coming through and uh, you get to take it all in and it's, you know, I was taken in for the whole week afterwards. It was just, it was a ridiculous day and, uh, no, it's just amazing. Now, listen, I don't want to suggest that it was unexpected, but we were treated to the most almighty surprise at Royal Ascot in the Norfolk Stakes when the Riddler took the field by storm and flew home to secure his free entry to the Breeders' Cup. But it's not just about the horse, it's also about the owners, and these guys are so passionate. Let's go and catch up with them. It could be Wesley Ward, look out, we're coming then, is it? <laughs> You buy mares, you breed horses, you think they're good enough, they fall off the wayside. To get a horse here is hard enough. To actually do something like that today is unbelievable. Inside the last furlong, the Riddler over on the far side, Brave Nation is finishing strongly. Wallbank is still in the thick of it. The three of them come together here. The Riddler just getting on top, close to the finish. And the Riddler and Paul Hannigan go on to win the Norfolk. Well, it's always meant a lot to us. As a family, we've been coming for 20 odd years in the Royal Enclosure. I lost my wife seven years ago, and your life dynamics change. And I mean, Lee's sister, my other son, absolutely brilliant. Oh, we've done our World Ram things on a Monday night when it's pouring down the rain. We've done Southern when the wind's coming in off the Urals. You know, we go watch all the horses wherever they're racing. So to get something like this is just, you know, we often dream of this. And, you know. Yeah, a lot of people have said here that this is the Olympics of European racing. And I suppose what we've done is we've won a heat in the Olympics or we got a gold medal, but now we need to go for the World Championships. And if that's a Breeders' Cup, that's a Breeders' Cup. Breeders' Cup, we're in. We're coming in across and we'll be in it to win it. The raw excitement and passion of winning in this sport is really second to none. You just can't beat it. And a man that knows all about winning is trainer Dermot Weld, when his superstar filly, Tanawa, won the Breeders' Cup turf back in 2020. Should we go and hear from him? Go on then. The build-up to the 2020 Breeders' Cup was very challenging. We had the problems with COVID. Uh, we had the problems with transportation of the filly. And, uh, it was a, a major challenge to get there in one piece. I knew Colin to be the top class rider that he is. He has great confidence. He rides a very relaxed sort of race and he would suit the filly perfectly. Off in the Longines Breeders' Cup turf. And Channel Maker is sent out to the early lead. She was never a quick breaker from the stalls and um, she was about where I expected her to be, third last, uh, but had plenty of room and wasn't tight on the inside. And they're being followed by Medea and Lord North to the outside. Break of another two links, more to Tarnawa, Donya, and Mogul on uh, Most people might be a little bit concerned because she went too far back, but that was the plan, was to get her to relax and um, come from off the pace. Magical was the big concern because she was very brilliant filly. And I was just concerned that we might be a little bit further back 
but Colin had magical, fully in his sights, and for that reason, I was comfortable. Mogul is in behind them, waiting for a way through. Mogul now six and a half behind and being asked to go, and Channel Maker kicks away. Yes, I had a concern about being too wide off the home turn, but we were able to get momentum off it to carry forward. But uh, yes, this was the first time I'd become concerned. Channel Maker reaching for the wire. Here comes Tarnawa, storming down the center of the course to take the lead. And Tarnawa, the Philly, has won the turf. Jubilation would be the first word to come to mind. And uh, I'll stay with that word. <laughs> Utter jubilation and pleasure. Mark was on the phone to me straight away. We were just gone by the line and he was on the phone. And uh, I think the phone never stopped ringing, to be quite honest. Uh, so it was one of those great evenings. She has followed the footsteps of great fillies like Enabel and Found, and uh, she deserves it because she was a great filly. She was the high, joint highest rated filly in the world and the joint highest older rated filly in the world. And she was every bit that, I can assure you. Tremendous courage, a very sound, and a great battler. As well as Royal Ascot, we have seen Challenge Series racing in South Africa, South America, the USA and Japan. But don't worry, if you haven't been following along, that is what I am here for. I'm going to get you up to speed on all the action. Let's go and have a look at who's already secured their place on a plane to Kentucky. Count again, Irad Ortiz Jr. putting on a show today as Count again streaks home in the Shoemaker Mile. Flight line is in full flight. He had a slow start, but a terrific finish in the grade one mid mile. Here comes Clarier on the outside. They're coming to the finish, and it's got to be Clarier. It is true, Valor. Arrest me, Red. Casa Creed on the outside. They're coming off for the finish. Casa Creed wins again. Sally Foss and Songline. Songline and Selios. Songline, Selios. Late is Stellmeister. And it's Songline. He has the lead at the moment. Nothing really coming. It will be Cafe Ferro going back to back. So Dashi, the white wonder. So Dashi is going to go on and score in the Victoria Mile. So Dashi wins out from Rosa Noir till in front. It's title holder Ishii Glass who goes to second and deep on into third. Title holder is going to go on and win. 100 yards to go. Olympiad with those powerful strides flourishes in the Foster. But with an eighth of a mile to go, she's back in South Florida and on her way back to the Breeders' Cup. Here's Cece in front. So let's see where we are so far. Starting with the Fanjul Mile, where we have unbeaten Bayid entered in, as well as Japan's Songline and South Africa's Jet Dark. The Breeders' Cup turf, as well as State of Rest, we have the Takarazuka Kinnan winner, title holder, who won very impressively in Japan. The Philly and Mare's turf was last year won by Japan's Loves Only You. Can they make it two in a row with Sodashi? Well, it would be wrong of us not to mention the Breeders' Cup Classic. Only two horses have qualified through the Challenge Series so far. From Japan, Cafe Pharaoh, whose dad, American Pharaoh, won the Classic, has an entry. And Olympiad, qualified by making it five wins from five starts in the Stephen Foster Stakes at Churchill Downs. So now I've got you hooked on the Breeders' Cup Challenge Series. You are going to want to know what to watch out for in the next month. Well, fear not. We have lots of win and you're in races, not only here in the UK, but across the pond stateside too. A few to watch out for are the Haskell at Monmouth Park, the King George here at Ascot, the Sussex Stakes run at Glorious Goodwood and the Bring Crosby at Delmar. You can find the full comprehensive list at breederscup.com forward slash challenge where you'll find all the information that that you need. But also come back here this time next month where I will be at Glorious Goodwood to fill you in on all the action. See you there. Goodbye. I don't really drink tea unless there's at least four or five sugars. Oh, well, that's our intro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway.